Today, so will I. We'll talk about that. <laughs> I, that's stunning. All right. We have another call about the Pirates. It's Brenda. Brenda, go ahead. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Bob. How are you? Good. How are you? Say hello to Hi, Andrew. Brenda. Hi there. Hi. Enjoy you guys. Hi, Brenda. And, en and enjoy the show. Uh, listen, I have a question. How many years has it been since the Pirates have been telling people that they're in the rebuilding phase? How many they haven't said that. We believe it is what it is, but they haven't really said that, have they, Andrew? They've never used that term. No, they haven't. They haven't? Well, what have they termed it? I mean, I thought <laughs> that's what they kind of had said, but what have they, what is their... Um... I don't know what they term it. It is what it is. It's a rebuild, and it's going to take long. And it's, you know, they still got, I don't know. I look like I just recited for you this Dodger rotation. What is the Pirates next year? You know, Mitch Keller, the better Keller was pitching tonight, I think, at PNC Park. And he's not the Keller they want up here. You know, you have Austin Davis or whatever his name is. You've got, you know, really, what is their starting rotation next year, Andrew? You hope that Brubaker, but he's getting worse, it looks like. He's going to have a lot of home runs. Is Keller good enough to be there? What do they do? I don't think they want to be good yet. I think they want to continue to seep to the absolute bottom of Major League Baseball. They want to be one of the teams that gets one of the top picks in the draft because they think that is their best way of compiling and accumulating great talent. So I would anticipate 2022, buckle up, baby. They want to lose between 90 and 100 games next year, Bob, because they think in the long run that is going to be beneficial for this team. Well, I understand that, but teams like the Tigers and the Orioles and others have tried that or at least attempt to do it, and they're not making any progress. It's difficult to do. Like, for example, real quick, before I go to break, I'm up against it here, Andrew. But again, Brian Hayes, again, I hope he turns out to be what they think, but there's no guarantee. We saw one month of him last year. He's a good defensive player, but the bat, I don't know what to think of the bat. Is he a cornerstone? Is he a guy you could really build around? I don't know we have the answer to that yet. I don't think we do either. Gregory Polanco was great his first, first two months in the major leagues. Look at what he's become. Uh, Hayes can play third base. He's great at it. He'll win gold gloves but he never really hit for great numbers in the minor leagues. So I think what you are saying right now is a legitimate concern. I don't know if Key Brian Hayes is a guy that you say, you're our best player, let's build around you. No, yeah, it's going to take some time. And he and Reynolds are the only two right now. We'll see. we got our tweet of the day coming up. And this is from our good friend Josh Yoey. We're going to talk about a Ranger acquisition coming up when we come back. But Josh says this on the Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day starting next season. There are going to be at least 28 NHL players counting more against the captain, Sidney Crosby. When analyzing his legacy, never forget how his unselfishness has helped the Penguin Shore. The 87 superstition helps, but he deserves more credit than he gets for this. And I totally agree yep. with that. In fact, the Braden Point's going to make almost a million more than Sidney Crosby. And Braden Point's a good player for I get it. Just kind of underscores what he's been doing. We're going to take a break, come back with more right here. It's the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call.